Welcome again to another edition of Worldview, brought, brought to you each week by the World History Classes. My name is Darren. And I'm Olivia. Our first story this week comes from the Middle East. A small United Nations tax force is currently taking account for Syria's stockpile of chemical weapons. These experts were given the information from the Syrian government that they are now <coughs> trying to verify. The Syrian government is believed to have acquired over a thousand tons of chemical weapons and they hopefully will be destroyed by late 2014. A suicide bomber caused an explosion at a playground of an elementary school in the village of Quebec in northern Iraq on Sunday morning. He was driving a truck filled with explosives. Quickly after the explosion, another suicide truck hit a police station at the same village and killed three officers. The mayor of Quebec called the school attack a crime against humanity as he observed the blood splattered books scattered around the playground. The terrorists are trying to stop us from living and sending our children to school, but they will not as long as we have our unity, he said. In Kabul, Afghanistan, Dutch investigators recently dug hundreds of dead people from 1978 and 1979. 5,000 of these vi victims were tortured, arrested, and killed by the Afghan Taliban government at the time. The bodies <coughs> were of innocent people who opposed the government. The Dutch believe that the deaths have something to do with the Soviet's invasion of Afghanistan at the time. Last weekend, our Navy SEALs captured a high-value target. The operation took place early Sunday, September 29th, in Tripoli, the capital of Libya. The SEALs captured Abu Alibi, who was wanted for his role in the 1998 bombing of two U.S. embassies in Africa. As he was returning to his house after morning prayers, ten masked men quickly snatched him. The Pentagon said that he was initially being held in a secure location outside of Libya and that he was taken to New York a week later. Last Saturday, another group of U.S. Navy SEALs launched an attack in Somalia, an attempt to capture an Al-Qaeda leader involved with the Kenyan Mall attack. After a 15 to 20 minute firefight, the team withdrew from the village, aborting the mission. On Sunday, Sweden had to shut down a nuclear power plant due to a jellyfish infestation. The plant's cooling water was taken over by tons of moon jellies, preventing the infested cooling water from reaching the reactor, which holds the nuclear fuel. The plant was several reactors, has several reactors, and only one was down due to the jellies. All the reactors are supposed to supply Sweden with 10% of its power. Each year, thousands of Africans immigrate for Europe seeking better lives. Last week, a boat filled with illegal immigrants from North Africa sank just 800 meters off the <coughs> coast of Italy. So far, 127 people have been reported dead, and 250 are still missing. 155 people survived, though. Some observers are claiming that the Italian Coast Guard was in delaying in the rescuing the immigrants, but the Coast Guard responded that they did not take unnecessary time. At least 50 people have been killed and many more hurt in Egypt in clashes between police and supporters of the recently deposed Islamist President Mohamed Morsi. Morsi supporters marched in several cities during a celebration in Cairo. Hundreds of people had, had gathered to cheer as the government put on a grand display of their military hardware. Thousands of Morsi supporters clashed with supporters of the current government. Security forces used, the, used tear gas and started to fire into the air to stop the fighting. After several hours of street battles, the military succeeded in keeping the rival supporters apart. More than 200 members of the Muslim Brotherhood have been arrested in connection with the violence. Congress is in a deadlock over the budget. John Boehner, House Speaker, said it is up to President Obama to start negotiations because he doesn't know when the government shutdown will end. <coughs> the President said that the House must act to end the shutdown. Speaker Boehner responded that he would not let his GOP-led House vote on the bill that will start on the government again without talking about cutting spending. There is an increasing problem in India where men are still considered the favored ginger. It seems that there is a decreasing number of women available to marry men. Most families want boys for labor and even for illegal dowries, so women get ultrasounds and have last-minute abortions of girl babies. Each year, there are only 650 girls born for every 1,000 boys. Many young women are having to leave their homes, lie about their age, and live with husbands who are typically twice or three times their ages. Many women are put into abusive relationships but are nothing less than forced labor. Gracie has the school service news. Thanks, Darren. 
This week in service news, remember to bring in supplies for birthday bags. Bring them in by this Friday. Students will assemble the bags next Wednesday the 16th. The grade that brings in the most bags will receive a cake for lunch. The JDRF walk is on Saturday the 26th of October. Mark your calendars for the Magrafeller run on November the 16th. Daniel has our sports news. Thanks Gracie. So far the Summit sports teams are doing a great job. The JV field hockey team lost to Salem Academy last week 0-1. They are 2-4-2 two, two this season. On Tuesday, the varsity field hockey team beat Forsyth Country Day 6-0. They are 5-2-1. Both JV and varsity volleyball teams defeated Forsyth Country Day last week. They are both having great seasons. Girls tennis is having a strong season so far with their final match next Friday. The boys soccer teams are both having strong seasons. JV beat Milliners Creek last Tuesday 2-0. Two Varsity soccer unfortunately lost to Forsyth Country Day 1-2. The football team is having an improving season. They played Bishop McGinnis last night, and they have their final game against Forsyth Country Day next Thursday at home at 4.30. That's a wrap for this week's Worldview. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye from the crew. We'll be back in two weeks.